Welcome to our Savior's uh, Lutheran in Hastings, Minnesota. If this is your first time joining us, we welcome you. And if you've been with us over the weeks and months or even years, we welcome you too. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your presence with us as we worship our Lord God. Bless us in our worship, in hearing your word, and in growing in our faith. Amen. We're going to take the opportunity now to confess our sins and then hear God's words of absolution, Jesus' words of forgiveness. Of course, I'll need to be speaking them for all of us, but this is corporate confession, communal confession. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our gospel for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds were gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of that word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us uh, share in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I ask that you open our minds and our hearts and our lives to your word that we may hear it, learn from it, grow in it, and then live your word of good news out in the world. Amen. <clears throat> oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. How many of you have ever heard this song before? Have any of you used it as a prayer? Do any remember the Disney cartoon that goes with this song? Do any of you remember who is supposed to sing this song? <laughs> yes, this is the Johnny Appleseed song and prayer. I've sung this prayer before meals with my family, at camps when I was a counselor, and sometimes even before meals at churches that I have served. Now, if you were listening closely, you heard me ask if anyone remembers the Disney animated song. I ask because there is such a cartoon. You can find it on YouTube. Just search Johnny Appleseed, comma, song, comma, video, but not during the sermon. Do it later. Who here has ever heard of Johnny Appleseed? Okay, I'm sure a number of you have. Was he real? Or does he belong in the pantheon of American heroes like Paul Bunyan, Rip Van Winkle, and Pecos Bill? Well, Johnny wasn't a tall tale, though he did acquire legend-like stories that surrounded his life. For Johnny Appleseed, or rather, John Chapman, was a real person. Chapman was born in Leominster, Massachusetts in 1774 and died near Fort Wayne, Indiana in 1845. And yes, he did carry apple seeds that he planted across parts of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. Quite often, Johnny is depicted walking along through the forests and fields, scattering apple seeds as he walked. And thus we imagine leaving apple trees in his wake. But that is not how it happened, for that is a terrible way to grow new apple trees. No, John Chapman actually would go to a place and create an apple tree nursery on someone's farm, and then return a few years later to prune and help the trees grow. So the landowner and Johnny would then make money by selling shares in the trees and create an orchard. Johnny Appleseed would eventually buy up acres of land in these different locations, 
where he planted orchards of apple trees. So though he lived and looked like an untamed traveler, sleeping rough and wearing, un uh, wearing used dirty clothing with holes and patches, he was not poor. Rather, Chapman saw his apple tree planting as a part of his religious life, for he was a missionary for what was called the New Church, a sect that was an offshoot from mainstream Christian doctrine. So besides sowing apple seeds, Johnny also tried to sow the seeds of his beliefs by passing out pamphlets and writings and telling people of his beliefs. Johnny Appleseed was a sower, both of seed and word. In today's scripture from Matthew, we hear how Jesus' parable of the sower. This parable is what brought to, mind my, brought to my mind the story of Johnny Appleseed. For I remember those pictures from my youth of Johnny simply casting seeds wherever he went, which we now know he didn't do. We know that he didn't do that because that is poor practice in regards to farming. Many of us, actually most of us, do not farm anymore. And so there are many things that we do not know as general knowledge regarding agriculture. So a farmer does not go and spread seed all over the place, and especially on the ground where they know that there's not a good chance that it will take root and be successful. The planting seed held over from the previous year's harvest was and is valuable to a farmer, for it ensures their future harvests, so you don't waste it. Thus, we can imagine that the farmers and those who understood the ways of agriculture in the crowd that day listening to Jesus on the beach <laughs> would have guffawed and ridiculed the sower in Jesus' parable. They would have thought, what a foolish man was he, wasting his precious seed, casting it on paths amongst thorns and in places where the sower knew the soil was shallow. That's not how a smart farmer sows, they would have said to one another, and they would have been right. In regards to farming, that is. But Jesus ultimately was not talking about farming methods or best practices, was he? No, Jesus was telling the people about God and God's nature. Jesus was giving his audience a picture of God's lavish and extravagant ways. Let us remember that parables are theological metaphors, not ethical stories. This means that they're not telling us how to live, but rather are nuggets of theology. Jesus' parables hold the truth about God, truth from which our faith grows. So some of the questions that we can ask about this parable, or any parable really, are, what does God do? How does God act? How are people in relation to God? In short, what, we, what do we learn about God from this parable? Well, Debbie Thomas, a theologian, writes, In other words, the sower in Jesus' parable is wholly unconcerned about where the seed falls or lands or settles. All he chooses to do is keep sowing, keep flinging, keep opening his hands. Why? because there's enough seed to go around. There's enough seed to accomplish the sower's purposes. There's enough seed to waste. Well, perhaps I think we need to name this parable the generous sower. Too often, though, as listeners, we get caught up in the interpretation of the soils, which means we're trying to figure out what kind of soils are we. And we ask, am I hard soil? Is my life filled with thorns? Am I shallow? Am I good soil? And of course, we then also look around and say about others, I think she's shallow. Or he's being lured into the thorns of temptations. In other words, we get caught up judging others and ourselves. Let's be frank. As faulty human beings, we are all of these types of soil depending upon what is happening in our lives, what we are focusing upon, whom we are following, or what, and what joys or tragedies we might be living through at that moment. 
We do not want to get into the habit of pointing fingers at others or ourselves, judging what type of soil another person's life might be, or in the same way we don't want to spiral down into the judgment of ourselves. For we must remember that Jesus is showing us God's very nature, God's natural inclination. God sows where we never would, and life blooms from God's word where we never think it could. Think of those whom Jesus hung out with and with whom he spent time eating meals. Talking with and teaching, they were often the undesirables. Just last week we heard Jesus say, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. In other words, through Jesus' interactions, we see him casting seed. That is, the word of God onto soils that we quickly judge to be bad soil. Yet who are we to know whether a person's heart at any given moment is good or bad soil? Who are we to judge another person's ability to hear God's word of unconditional love, life-changing forgiveness, and the gift of eternal salvation? Can we decide within whom the Holy Spirit is going to move and bring transformational life? No, we cannot. So rather than wasting time trying to judge who is worthy to hear God's word, to feel God's love, and experience God's forgiveness of sins in their lives, let us simply follow God, the generous sower's example. And so, let us cast the word of God's good news out into the world. Let us sow God's word, give God's forgiveness, and try and live God's love in the lives of the people whom surround us whether we might be tempted to judge them as good or bad soil. Like true seeds that have fallen in impossible places and not simply grown but flourished, let us share the good news of what God does in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us tell others how sin does not rule, but rather Jesus' forgiveness gives us life today and forever. Let us show others the joy that we can feel because we have experienced the release from the worries and hurts that crowd our lives. Let us live out the peace that comes with knowing that Jesus walks by our side through all of life's troubles, loving us each step of the way. Let us share the faith in our God, the generous sower, that is shared in the second verse of the Johnny Appleseed song. Oh, and every seed I sow will grow into a tree. And someday there'll be apples there for everyone in the world to share. Oh, the Lord is good to me. Amen. Let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with a day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. 
When my heart is cold, warm it with a day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O generous God, we thank you for your abundant and life-giving grace in which we stand. Help us to cast your word, filled with your love and new life, into the lives of the world that it may bear fruit. Help us always to not judge, but to care for, forgive, ask for forgiveness, and live into the new life that you give us as our Savior, that the world may know you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear our desperate cries for your presence and help in the world. We are altering your good creation because of our need for domination. Please provide respite for those trapped in record-breaking heat. Give dry land to those whose lives are being washed away by record-breaking floods. And give clear skies for all being affected by the smoke and pollution from the hundreds of wildfires in Canada and the U.S. Help us to hear your call to care for your creation and provide for the generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you be in all regions of the world where there is war and violence. We pray for your peace. We pray for healing. We pray for forgiveness. I ask that you be with those who are living under oppression and domination of dictators and those who act like dictators those who are living under autocracies and places where um, freedoms are being taken away. We ask that you uh, lead our leaders and that you help them to govern for the good of all people. And where they are wrong, correct them. And where they are right, give them courage. We pray that you be present in our cities and towns and countryside. Protect us from violence protect us from hate and division, and help us to look at one another as fellow children of God, that we may reach out and uh, establish relationships, create friendships, and share your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of miracles, we give to you all who are sick, hurt, diseased, or struggling in any way, in body, mind, or spirit. Give healing to David, Mary, and all whom we hold in our hearts who need your presence. Bring comfort and peace to those who are grieving. Please walk with the family and loved ones of Eunice Novik. Give them solace in their sorrow and hold them in comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, lead us each day along our paths, walking before us to prepare a way that we may try and love as you love. Help us to look beyond ourselves, to look to the needs of others, that we may all live in your kingdom of peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then, Lord, I ask that you bless all who are traveling, vacationing, resting, and working in these days of summer. Rejuvenate us physically, mentally, and spiritually. Into your hands, gracious God, we give all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and love. Amen.
I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We want to thank you for all that you do and give to Jesus' ministry through the church. Be it your time or talents, your ideas and passion, or your money and resources. We thank you for working hand in hand with us as Jesus' hands, feet, and heart. You can give electronically to the work here at Our Saviors by visiting the website or look at the address given below on the screen. Or you can mail a check to Our Saviors at the address listed in the contact section of the website at www.osel.org. Let us pray. We thank you, dear Jesus, for all that you give us in our lives. Help us to offer back to you and your work here on earth a portion of what we have received. Bless our offerings for your people and ministry. Amen. Thank you for your part in God's ministry here at Our Saviors. Just a couple of announcements. Um, even though we're only here in the midsummer and we do want to enjoy it while it lasts, registrations are already open for this coming fall uh, children and youth ministry opportunities. Our church school, which is Jesus and Me, as well as our confirmation and ministry, God, um, God and Life. You can register for those on the website. Then I invite you to pray for the youth and adults traveling to Colorado on the mission trip. Uh, who leave next Sunday. Please keep all of us in your prayers uh, for safety in traveling, for safety in our uh, keeping our health, and uh, that our children and youth may grow in all that they're doing and that uh, God may work through them in their words and actions. Thank you for your prayers. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord by casting God's word into the world. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.